this is Jeff Giroux again. Today I'm going to be covering the F5 failover method in Azure Cloud using HA via API. So I'll start off with two F5 boxes. This one's going to be unit A, this will be our active box. This is unit B, and this will be our standby box. I'll quickly draw some servers just for application visual representation. And then we'll talk about some of the requirements here. So an API failover method requires permissions for these devices to call the Azure Cloud and make that API call. This requirement is a currently using a service principle. So make sure that your service principle account is properly configured. In our GitHub templates, we recommend contributor role. So assign that to your F5s via the GitHub readme files, and then that way we're able to successfully make that API call. That's requirement number one. The second requirement is to make sure we have IP configs on each of the boxes. So we're going to draw a multi-NIC setup here. Each one will have a management. We're also going to have an external interface. We'll have an internal interface. And our standby box will have the same. We'll have an external, we'll have an internal. From here, we still need IP configs. So let's call this outside subnet 10.1.1, and we'll give the active unit .10, we'll give the standby unit .11. Now we have two front end IPs. These are both associated with the Azure VM NIC. We gotta do the same for the back end. Let's call this subnet 10.1.2. We'll do dot 10, dot 11. Our IPs are now allowing connectivity with our F5. What we need now is our floater address for our VIP config. So let's put that up here. And we're gonna put it in the same range. We'll call it 10.1.1.100. This needs to be configured on the active device. The reason why, let's draw some of this stuff up over here. We have IP configs. Which all require to be configured in the Azure portal. We'll draw this way over here. So IP config for Azure has all these configs. We also have our VIP for 10.1.1.100. And during a failover event, what happens is that the F5s make an API call to Azure to say, hey, what secondary IP do I have configured? Please move those over upon failover event. So notice here our VIP is our floater. Upon failover event, this 10.1.1.100 will make a transition from unit A to unit B. And when that happens, now traffic is able to flow through unit B, which is now active, and now we can successfully process traffic. The other things that we should be concerned about are SNATs and SNAT pools, for example. For an active unit, you might have a SNAT pool within this 10.1.2 range, a .12, .13, .14, and those can also float over. Um, one thing that I want to talk about, too, is in case your servers need to see the real client IP, what we want to do is make use of UDR route failovers. And via the API method, we're able to also float over UDR routes. And what does that mean? Well, if we want to have a 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0 from the source servers going outbound into next hop F5, then we're going to associate the next hop with the internal IP. 10, 1, 2, 10. This allows us to have a real client IP sent back to the server for those non-web HTTP applications. Thanks for watching. That concludes this section of the video. Stay tuned for the next video series. Thank you.